So guys, welcome to episode five of the Verify Build 001. Slightly more of a busier opening than we're used to doing. Got to site, everyone's here. We've got Nick, he's here running cables today. With Adam, we've got Dan the landscaper, who's digging a trench, we'll show what that is later. We've got Chris the plumber, who's helping put the stopcocks in at the back. And we've just got a delivery from our friends over at Rocker, who are a sponsor of the Verify Build. You'll learn more about those in the upcoming episode. But now, I need to get everyone's hands to unload these five pallets. Nice, all right. Camera's still rolling. Harry's rolling the camera now so he doesn't have to lift pallets. <laughs> Nick's up there, he's hiding. Nick is hiding upstairs, pretending he can't hear us with Adam because they're refusing to handball this stuff off. Hello? I only got asked. Oh, you Oh, I'm trying to get rid of the pallets. Oh, nice one, mate, thank you. Just to make it clear for the record, it's got a very bad back. Can't lift. Lexi. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, you want. Drive safe, mate, stay well. Please, if we're sitting here looking at the, uh, the black garden the way I do. Please. You're seeing stuff that I don't right now. Yeah. I'm kind of just looking at it. First thing I'm thinking, by the way, is you need to start on this landscaping soon, otherwise you're gonna to have to re-rip out the garden with how quick this stuff's growing back. Yeah, and this is one of the things that we need to uh, contend with as well. So obviously we can scrape it off, keep scraping it off. At the end of the day, we've turned it all over, so you're gonna get stuff growing through. Yep. So when you try and kill some of this off, but you get the stuff that doesn't kill grass. Yep. So before we get onto what you're doing today, yeah. the reason I grabbed you and wanted to mic you up is you just stood there and like you're in all the trance staring at the levels back here. What yeah. are you thinking? So where that water part's sticking up there, I want to build that level up this side. The other side we can't because obviously you've got to work to the damp course level of yep. the properties. We've had to work to the lower level being the cottage. So this stone was trimmed up not far off. And that, that back area, that's porcelain paving yeah. From where that water pipe is, what's the idea there? What's what you're thinking around this area back here? So over here, basically what we need to do is form the retainer. For people watching, they don't know what a retainer is. What's a retainer? So basically just to retain the ground. Okay. That, it does what it says on the tin. Retain the ground. We're going to build that ground up, build it up in layers, compact it, and then we're going to build it up to a suitable level so we can stone all this up, rip all this tarmac out, this concrete, mm -hmm. put some edging stones across the front of the drive, have it just tie up one with some dressing stone on. Yep. So when you come on, it's also going to act as a natural filter as well. So we're going to put a little bit of a land drain system through it, which will link into the this drain system we'll have in the back garden. You'll be able to drive on. The idea is this four bed here, the cars will come in and they can swing in their own little parking area right next to the property. Yep. Um, which is going to have post and rail fencing. So it's, it still looks open, Yep. but it's going to serve a purpose. That way, the parking for the cottage can be over here but without making this area look like a car park. Talk to me about what's going on here, because that's what you and Chris are really focusing on today. So today what we're doing is we're renewing the water pipe connection. So as you can see over there, looking at the brass coupler sticking out the ground. Let's go and, have a, let's go and point it out. Yeah. The lead pipe is shot and I weren't happy with it. So the idea is we're going to take this water pipe and we're going to take it all the way around to the meter. So we're going to swing it around this corner. Yeah. Not too sharp, keep a nice flow and bring it over to the water meter. Here, we'll have Chris come in, do his connection, send the pipe round, connect straight up to a main stop tap, which will isolate both properties in an emergency. I guess the point there is this property, as we know, this used to be one big property. Yeah. And then the previous owners downsized it, so we've got a house and a cottage, but we need a stop for both of them. Yeah. So where are they going to be? So, as I said, we're going to have a stop tap. We're, got, we're going to have another one over here. Reason being is the stop tap here at the moment, when I went to turn it off the other week, it was really stiff okay. and there was still a trickle. So the idea is we're going to put a new connection on, new stop tap, MDPE, nice and reliable. Nice, okay. Right. So we'll come back around here and then when we get to the four bed, it'll have its own isolation valve stop tap and then that'll then go into the house and there'll be an internal stop tap as well. Perfect. Okay, so you've got three points of isolation. So you're digging that channel out, but you're not stopping here because we've got the cottage. Exactly, yeah. So we'll come to a T, and off the other side of the T, it'll come straight down to the cottage. And just trying to remember where the water feed is. I think we're coming in through this wall here, because this is where the downstairs toilet's going to be. Yep. And you've got the kitchen next door as well. So we'll either pour one into the kitchen there, and then put a T in and bring it into here. Yep. Or we'll bring it straight in to the property 
My personal favourite would be swing it straight into the property. For me, it's just dig a trench out, assist Chris, get the connections on, and then uh, get it all backfilled. So get nice. some sand over it. And the next time we see you is going to be on the back garden in the future? Yes, it is, yeah. So uh, if we get some time today, we'll start doing some reprofile and have a look at what we're going to do with it. Because what we're trying to do, if you look at the garden now, we are going to try and do it in two separate levels. Yep. So it kind of demarcates the gardens quite nicely. Uh, but also it saves having the steps within the garden for the, the property. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> you I, um, didn't, you, um, didn't you make some content on customers taking scrap? Yeah, I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm on the back of that wagon. Oh, is that your scrap? I didn't know it was your scrap. Uh, hang on. That was my initial rip out. That was... Oh, that's before you arrived? That's before oh, you so arrived. Oh, so you've not taken anything I've not touched anything eh, there yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> my scrap! <laughs> Are we putting the drain in? Around the back side of that or... Macerators. Chris has just grabbed me to ask about if we're going to put the drain in and we need this man's input, who's very politely gone to the shop. Can we grab you for a sec just to talk about... Here we go. Diet Coke. What's the colours? Cameraman. Is that a full fat Fanta? Damn right. He's never drinking that. He's, I'll swap with you. I need, yeah. I need, I need the energy Yeah, you try and... Insult his body with full <laughs> fat. The question is, are we putting a drain in or are we putting macerators in to the toilets? Preference would be drain, but the question that Chris has highlighted, levels. Levels, yeah. Yeah, so looking at how the level build up around this side, we the chamber. I've got my laser levels coming in uh, on Thursday. And I'll double check, but there's not been enough fall. You'll have to crap stacking up, literally crap stacking up. Kay. So better to get a macerator, control it, push it into the stacks, which we've already proved the flows outside the front work, haven't we? So we did drainage tests a few weeks ago. So what we're trying to work out now is whether all of that is factually correct or you're trying to have an easier life. <laughs> I don't mind, mate. I don't mind. <laughs> but I'm not taking the porcelain back up because someone instructed me to put the drains in. Okay. Minimal force. See what he's done there. He's, like, he's sure played the big fair yeah, strategy. Yeah, 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 played the big fair strategy on me there. Okay. <laughs> we don't want to get the porcelain. So it looks like macerator, and do we need to purchase those and get those from Rocker? I don't know. Rocker probably won't do their own. But is it like a universal fit? So we can just yeah, pick yeah. any. Sounds like we're getting macerator. Sounds like Dan. One nil to Dan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But also, Dan can, Dan can service them when they break down then. You had me macerator on your voice, mate. Not for <laughs> Right, today's little objective is we've got the cable runner out, which is the Rumpatech XB300-1 faucet, whatever it is, this thing. For us, we're starting from the furthest point, so the kitchen is below. We're doing a ring main, so we need two 2.5 mil cables. That's why we've got two drums together on it at the same time, make life a bit easier. So if you're only going to do a big run, you need two cables, put two drums on it. Uh, this will allow us to have a ring main from the board as a full circle and all the way back. This will then go up to a 32 amp breaker um, we'll take up to 32 amps for the ring. We'll still need to run two 6 mils cables across, two 6 mil twins, a lighting feed, some other bits and bobs. But for the first day of running cables, we thought we'll start furthest point, which will be the kitchen, all the way across the other side of the house where the fuse board's been located. Uh, the last time we were here, we had the chipboard runs up. We got all of our runs that we needed out of the way. So really, theoretically now, our life should be easier where we can just go all the way around, do a loop of cable and buy the fuse board. We'll label it up, kitchen ring. We'll leave some slack here, cut it off, kitchen ring. And then we'll go and do upstairs, downstairs sockets, um, maybe start the lights, just depending on how far we get done. So this is all the process now. Once you've made all the mess, start running some cables in and get them in place. This is not a usual house um, layout because you've got almost double joists here where they either had to strengthen it in the past or they wanted to level the floor out while we've got two lots of joists. So normally you would drill through every joist and run it through. Um, but that's why we've got like a half a foot void here. But because of where the chimney is and everything like that, we've gone through one joist over there, but then there's a brick wall in between another joist. So we can either try and measure it up both sides and do a spade bit and get the hole and SDS through the brick. Or what we've ended up doing, it'd be a lot easier just get a long SDS bit and just hammer your way through everything. Um, but unfortunately for Adam, my apprentice, <laughs> he just realized it's not just the one hole, it's about three we have to make for the cooker circuits and also the lights. So yeah, it just took a little bit longer, but now this should be a clean run all the way through. And we start should, uh, whacking in some cables. And once we've got enough slack, to regs, in my opinion, we can leave these flat sat on the floor where they are in between the two lots of uh, beams because we've got beams on top, lower plasterboard, and then we've got beams underneath for a fire barrier. Um, because a lot of the things now are regulation and these all support, like metal clip supports um, for uh, 
like fire fires and whatnot, sort of stuff, so cables don't go dropping in, in, in the case of a fire. Um, but what we've got is a cable stapler, which is next to you, uh, which has got metal clips. So once we pull some slack, we'll do some loops and then we'll staple that into the wood as well. So we're putting metal clips in for a premature collapse of cables in case of a fire. This is what men at work look like. Two hours later. <laughs> <laughs> so we're playing this game on site today, which is how many guys does it take to fix an excavator. But while they're doing that, we thought we'd share the roof with you. So, as you can see, the roof looks no different <laughs> to how we started. I am only joking. We can see that the waves have been taken out, but realistically, when you spend that much money, it is a little bit underwhelming. But I'm really happy with the end result, but largely just the fact that we know when the next person buys this property, the house and the cottage, their roof is structurally sound. We wouldn't want to have left it in the state that we found it. So the roof's been done. You're gonna put that up? Just one minute, guys. I'm not entirely sure why they're taking an angle grinder to the excavator. What I think's happened is there's a pin for the bucket that they can't remove. So basically, they've got a big machine that can't dig right now. <laughs> we'll get back to the roof in just two minutes. It's really good that we've got the plumber here to watch over this. <laughs> I'm supplied the tools, mate. Oh, is that your grinder? Yeah, they'll be stuck without me. Oh, wow, okay. You can see how he's still holding on to his red ball. <laughs> Some of the things that I was looking for when it came to the roof was making sure that the chimneys have all been repointed, all the gable ends and everything that we can see around the property. You can see here above the doorways, the gable ends, everything looks dead tidy. Beyond that, there's not too much that I can actually inspect. Apart from that, I just know we brought the right team in to do the work. Also, one thing that you might remember, and I'm not sure if it made it into the episode, but we have this little triangular window. Let's come and quickly show you. <clears throat> There was a triangular little pane of glass that was boarded up and we had glazing up here talking about what's the solution for this window. So we spoke to the roofers and we've made life a little bit easier for everybody. The roofers have just taken that out. It means it's gonna to have to be boarded on the inside, but it gives a much tidier finish to this lower level of the roofing. Overall, extremely happy, roof's done. Key light roof windows are in. And if you want to go and see more about key light roof windows, there's a dedicated video on the channel specifically about the installation start to finish of those beautiful windows. Go and check it out. So guys, it's Thursday, we're on the way to site. Had a phone call on Tuesday night saying that we've hit a services cable. So we're gonna go and find out why it happened as well as what we did to make sure that Western Power went and made it safe. And hopefully electricity's back on right now and we can get on with the job. Let's go find out. We just pulled by, see the trench. So this looks a bit different to where it was yesterday. I'm assuming that this is the work that Western Power did to make safe because this is where I remember them scraping around with a shovel to expose the water. Let's go and grab Dan. When we were talking to Dan in terms of what he was gonna do, which is running the water pipe, bending it around so there's not the junction, all this has been done. That's pretty quick. That's a good looking trench. So, where was it? So, digging through clay. Yeah? Yep. Come on. Intention yesterday was find and locate the uh, side of the stop tap. Mm -hmm. So we can then key into the side, put a new feed in, because uh, what we found was the original wasn't very reliable. Yep. So splitting the feed off to two properties, we want to be able to isolate them individually. With this driveway, as you can see from behind you, you've got concrete, got tarmac. Yep. So we just peel the top of the, top, uh, the concrete off, digging down and trying to find services. Yep. Right, so as you can see from the ground conditions, there's all sorts in there. That's a prime example. There's a bit of brick inside the clay. So over the years, stuff's been chucked on top. With it being a farming area, it wouldn't surprise me is if this had some crush put down at some point and then basically they're just concrete over the top. When you of say it. crush, you just mean broken stone, rubble, dumped, rollered? Yeah. Okay. But it wouldn't necessarily be rollered, it just chucked down, chucked on. driven over over time, and then 
obviously they put some tarmac over the top of some concrete to yep. try and make it look a bit more aesthetically pleasing to the eye and functional. Whilst doing so, we're pulling down the trench, we located the electric cable there, we pulled that out of the way, dug down the side of it. Before putting the bucket in the ground, we'd always do a trial hole with the, book, with the uh, shovels. Yep. So as you can see, standing up against the wall, we've got the narrow nose grafter. So this tool that here- That used to be my nickname on site. Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see, looking on the side, the rate up to a thousand volts. These yep. are insulated. Then use them on the utilities. For that reason, if you do come into contact with something, this will insulate it and stop it traveling up the, the shaft. Is that what you always use the, anyway? These are the only tools I use. So purely anti Groundworks background all my life, I've seen stuff and you don't want to see it again. If you're digging in the ground, get insulated. Luckily, these cables aren't massive, but it has been known where some people have had larger cables going through the garden. Yep. Digging through, hit it, it's gone bang. So what's happened basically, now, this, this bit here, I think was done by Western Power to isolate the cable further on. Yep, they, they explained to me, so just for anyone watching, what I had to do was call Western Power on a basically an emergency number that stated that we've got a fault at the property that could be dangerous. We explained what had happened in terms of it was hand dug out. Engineer came out, credit to them, came out within two, two and a half hours, spoke to you on the phone. We pulled everyone off site until this was resolved, just because we want to make sure that we're working in safe conditions. Western Power came out and they said the first piece of work they did was isolate it to make it safe for him to work on. Yeah. Is that that one? So that's not that's, where it, that's not where the default occurred. No, what they tend to do is they tend to trip the power. Yeah. So they do that, they isolate the power and then that allows them to split the cable so they'll, they'll cut the cable. So at that point, isolated the power, come yep. down here, this is now a dead cable. Yeah, even, even back to the uh, fuse box down the road, okay. that'd be isolated because doing that shock isolates the line. So where this uh, gland is here, they'd have cut the cable where it's been damaged, so just cut it straight in half. So this is where it was damaged? Yeah. Okay. They would have stripped it back, connected the cores back up, wrapped the sheath in, and then they put this round. It isn't just to protect the cable from coming apart, it's actually got a resin inside and it keeps it from letting moisture in. Okay. Because the secondary issue is with any cable, if, if you, even if you just caught the sheath in on the, out, on the outside, is that water can still get in. Okay. So it's going to cause you problems further down the line. So what's this one down here then? So this one, again, when I was, uh, just spoke about the sheathing, this here, again, hand dig, he's just literally nicked the side and it literally would have been something about 10 so or 15 So he's just mil. done best practice here, just while he can access it, yeah. just tidy it up. But as you can see from the cable, looking at the variation in height, it's come up, it's come down, yep. side to side. When, when looking at here, you, down the bottom there, you've got two cables that are together and they're running up together. One's obviously feeding this four bed, one's going around to the cottage. Normally you say, right, okay, whoever stuck these in, we'll put them together. Yep. They haven't, they've split off and they've gone all over the shop. So Dan, before we look at the rest of the work and then have a chat with Chris, yep. what he's doing with the water in, what am I looking at down here? What's right. that the waste? This is your surface water waste. So there's a utility room there. Yep. Um, it also ties into your surface water on the side of the house for all your stacks, uh, sorry, your, your downpipes. So basically that just run down into the drain that's actually covered up with that bit of muck. The reason why that muck's around there is because obviously end of play yesterday, I wanted to make sure this area was safe. So put a, a muck bun around it, put cones out to make sure it all the work area. One thing as we came around here, what's, what's this the gas? This nice, nice bright yellow pipe here is actually your gas feed. Well, that's sitting pretty high. That is sitting pretty high. This uh, gas pipe we found once before. This is the first time we found it here. We found it further down the line, down there, where you can see the lads laying out the water pipe. Yeah. So it crosses the trench. Yeah. When we did the reduced dig on the garden, we found the gas pipe was doing this all over the garden and it came out toward the middle, back in, back out. So we've basically <laughs> straightened it out and just made a dog leg in it. Keeps you on your toes, doesn't it? Keeps us on our toes, yeah. Chris, can I grab you for a sec, mate? We've got the trench. Mains water feed in. What's yeah, so your, what are you doing here? What's the job to do? We're running mains water because there was only one initial stop tap around the corner. Yeah. So we've got two we've, properties. Two properties. So we've run a new mains to get rid of all the old lead. So we're going to have a stop tap in each property. So they've both got control of their own supply. Um, and yeah, just, just ran a, a nice new blue poly down yep. at 750 deep as a minimum. Bang some sand around it and on top of it just so it's got that bit of movement. Oh, so you're not just backfilling this stuff straight back in, sand first, sand then Sand first, yeah, just to allow for that movement, just so, you know, you've got sharp stones and stuff like that, you don't want anything to pierce it. Makes sense. Later down the line, if this is all going to be pretty. And then just so people that are watching know what you're doing next, once this is in, what's your next job on the property? My next job is I've got to get the inside stop taps done. Yep. And then I can run the cold mains around the house to wherever everything's going, to boilers, bathrooms, kitchens.
alles vuil zijn. Hey! Hoi oh, man. Ja, ja, ik heb te meet you. Hoi, oh, hey, dude. Hoi, oh, hey, man. Ja, yeah, not too bad. Nice to meet you too. Right. When you guys get here. Hoi, hey, mate. You're right. Yeah, good. We bought this. Because, because I knew that you would kick off the same as Chris if I bought a football. We do some work with a company called Keylight and they're raising uh, awareness for a charity called Mates in Mine. Um, but, uh, mate, I know, mate, I know. I, I just, you're sorted. No, I, I got a torn ACL and meniscus and I rolled my knee last night. So I'm like, oh, you're out? You're out of the game? Sounds like an excuse, that does. Sounds like an excuse. Got him. You can use weak foot. Oh, here we go. Kick him, Adam. He's all right. <laughs> yeah. get, get competitive. Are you kidding me, Ryan? No, not in those boots. You haven't got a chance. <laughs> but I'm here with Ryan, who is another domestic electrician. Domestic? Domestic, yeah. I would say a domestic. Better electrician. Yeah. Um, we've obviously made a good start on the house. We're going to run Ryan round. You've done similar properties like this. Yes. Get your thoughts on it. What you would have done different, if not the same, hopefully. Yeah if you've seen stuff like this. So the first one I want to take you through is the kitchen Go. with the Show. lowest headroom in the world. Show me around, please. So this was the first challenge. Don't bang your head. Right, yeah. yeah. I'm, um, You're all right on that bit. I'm all right. Oh, yeah, you got that bit. There you go. Was, we haven't done the kitchen yet. We're still waiting for the, the final measurements of the kitchen okay. plan. Um, solid floors, concrete? Solid concrete floors. Yeah, and then what we've got as well is obviously so low ceiling. Yes. But what we have above is minimal void, which we, we thought was going to happen. Right. Normally with this, to you guys watching, you've got these, you know, cross members, you would have this sunk into the ceiling so plasterboard would sit I was going to say, here. lighting's going to be a bit of an issue in here. This is wall lights. We're going to okay, have to follow yep. the same suit as we did before. Yep, makes Under sense. lights, some plinth lighting, just for a glow in the evening. Mm -hmm. We thought it would be nice with LED strips, but the way it would sit, it would be so difficult to get it looking nice. Yes. Trying to plaster it in. And if you mount anything around here, you're losing that height. More headroom. Yeah. Then again, it will blind you, heating, yeah, touching. So that was the first thing. And then we obviously want to run cables from here across the fuse board. So yes. we pulled up the floors above, which unfortunately for an age property would normally expect floorboards, which we yeah. like. That's what I would assume. Yeah. Not the case. No, no. Not. go and have okay. a look. So what have we got? So wow. this is the worst one. Oh. Yeah, Ooh. that's... Um, Don't have a few points. At least they've sort of chamfered the edge, <laughs> <laughs> luckily enough. What I found interesting slash strange, which I have seen vaguely something like this before. Chipboard to start with, which it that's is what it is. That's a struggle in itself, isn't it? It is what it is. Yeah. But by picking the floor, we've now also got a raised floor. So we've got a great gap to rod stuff across. So, so uh, that is the original floor underneath this raised Raised thing. floor, yeah. Okay. We couldn't quite grasp it because normally with a ceiling like we've got downstairs, you can still see the individual joists and beams yes. protruding through. Yes. But someone's actually boarded the entire ceiling okay. below. And it looks like the ceiling's been boarded the drop exactly as well. Exactly the same that. So, so that height has uh, lost you, quite a bit of height. You've lost nearly two foot yeah. in this room, which isn't too bad because it's a good clearance still. But then you limit yourself to light fittings again. I'm guessing from here, people have just tried to level, okay. square the room out yeah. because it's been an old cottage in the office property. Yeah. And you, can, you can sort of see that it's sort of where yeah. we're, we're on a bit of a slide. Do the marble right? test if we had one. Um, Pink laser around, make sure it's level. You still might find that. Yeah, so this is what we had to do with property like this is to make it good to the eye, the best thing is is just measure a floor yes. rather uh, than laser. Yes, exactly what I would say. Laser level, you can, it will It would be different yeah, each side. Definitely. So if you want it to look good to the eye, and we have said it before in the past, when you've also put a socket, let's say, to a ledge like this, where you've got a clean square edge. Yes. This could be quite out of plumb. By putting a square one in, it actually only makes your socket look unlevel rather than the walls. Well, so that's, that's, the, that's the usual thing with customers. You put something level and they go, that's It doesn't, doesn't look right. But actually, what, what you've you do? done is perfect. Exactly. So you need to use your judgment and speak to the customer when yeah. you're doing stuff to see what they want, level or unlevel, but what looks good to the yeah. eye. Any straw walls? No straw walls. No We've straw got walls. very thick plaster work okay. and very hard bricks. So this wall here has actually been dabbed off. Is, is, that, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? We solid don't walls can be a pain in the neck. They can. I think more modern solid walls are okay because yes. you get the small chunks. Um, but with the older brick as well, if you're chiseling out, you get monstrous bits. You can that tell fall. you've used the Metabo wall chaser. Yep. This has been stood off a horrendous amount. There. Again, but that's that's taken away from More the room. depth of the room. Yeah, yeah. Again. and then it's the same Strange. thing next door, but this wall thickness here is probably half a meter as well. Right. So, but what we've had to do, we've passed all the cables underneath. Yeah. We are going to use the cable stapler and actually do a bit of premature collapse. 
yep. but yep. you've got two layers of plasterboard okay. and also you've got oak beams. Yes. So if you were to say to me, would you be happy leaving the cables on the floor? I'd actually say yes. Yeah. We're not, we've got the stuff we can actually you know, support it a bit better. Yeah. But what's there is ample enough for what we need for fire eggs. I agree, yeah. And then the other difficult we found, we want to get back to the uh, fuse board on the far side of the utility room where we walked in originally, and you would normally go across the landing, wouldn't you? You would assume so. But, yeah. but, 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 another. So I did notice this floor, this, is so this feels solid. This is concrete floor. So what we figured out from, it's the same thing in the wardrobe. Okay. It is a wooden floor, but it's poured concrete on top. And from wow. the videos that I've already done the place, a lot of my viewers said to me it was to do with the fire safety for near the stairs. Back in the day, that's how okay. they would get around it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Quite, see, it's concrete, still got wood fire underneath. retardant, yeah. But okay. um, yeah, so we couldn't bring the cables, so we had to do exactly the same thing in here, mm -hmm. all the way through, across in the bathroom, across yep. into the bedroom. So and how much cable, how much more cable would you say you would have run I think this in is terms of doing it the route you would have liked to have taken? I think it's probably a couple more meters. It's not too bad, okay. but we've right. allowed ourselves more boards up, more space, more yeah, room to yeah, pull, because yeah. we've got a lot of cables to pull around. Obviously, this whole run isn't just for the kitchen, it's for downstairs sockets, sockets upstairs. upstairs sockets. Yeah. Um, and yeah. also, you've got the different steps. So it actually worked out a little bit better that way. I've always found the levels on these sort of, uh, on these properties, it's, um, yeah, it's up, down, up, down constantly, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then there was these ones. This is an original floor in that I can see, or well, not far off, I say original, it's an old building. Yeah. When we took these up, you originally think, oh, Tongan Groove uh, board. It's not. It was actually all butted together and okay. there were cross angled screws, uh, sorry, nails, but the old handmade nails, which you can see in this board here. Yeah. So we oh, ended up right. running. They went right across. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we ended yeah. up running an angle grinder just to cut the to boards. Up. And yeah. it took a, probably per board, you're probably looking at about 15 minutes. It was really? an absolute pain. Right. Um, but then again, we can rod across, but this is the old cabling where they used to do it, where they that's knocked not, that's, out. That's not something you sort of take into account on a job like this, is it? Not at all. Uh, that sort of time that's involved in just taking up a floorboard. Yeah, especially um, chipboard, though. Yeah, we're, we're, you, any, any that's, that's not something you usually have to factor in, is it? No. Domestic-wise, if you guys are pulling into a house and there's a floorboard, tongue and groove, yeah. we know we can pretty much pull it up, we can chop yeah. it wherever we want, we can lift yeah. it up. You have the same uh, floor plan, but with chipboard, you are almost taking oh. it three times longer no. for one board. Yeah. And 99% of the time, it will never go back down the same. No, of course No not. matter how careful you are, no. because they're not only nailed, screwed, they're also glued, glued. together. Yeah. So once you're there out, it's it's a difficult thing to yes. put back agreed, in and make agreed. good. But other than that, yeah, we're getting somewhere. We've got the cables pulled in. That's where the fuse wall's going. So you okay. can see where we pulled a little bit of concrete up to see. Yes. And that's about an inch or so thick. So we are now below the kitchen that we first room. So we that's first... the utility over there. Yeah, okay, right. This here is on the corner of the, the utility. Okay. This here is the dining room. If you just see under there, there's already a brick removed. Yes. That brick is then our access down into the new fuse board area. So that's, that's as far as we've got so far. So when we start running all the new circuits in, they will come poked down with enough length on to make off, to move around. So but you've been around, you've chased everything Everything in, everything in so two days. The hard work, in a sense, is The messy is stuff. Done. And then yeah. we came back the next day, picked all our floorboards up, all our runs, drilled the holes what we needed to. Because, yeah, on the job of this, especially for me, I like to start get the chasing done. And yeah. plan, your first plan route is exactly. exactly where I'm going to get cables to, get the chasing done. It might not. It might not seem that you've done a lot, but you do. It's a lot hard work. Get the hard work and the messy get, stuff out of exactly. the way. Exactly. Plan where you're going. And cables. Hopefully. It's probably the easiest bit putting the cables. Yeah. Then then you bit a second fixing, but that's months down the line after the plaster's been in and uh, made a yeah. mess. Yeah. Usual. And then the plumber, of course. Yeah, we don't talk mess. about them. No. No. Don't talk Plumbers? about them. Yeah. No. Who? Next week, pulling some more cables. So we pulled in the ring, well, for the future for the yeah. kitchen. Got to do down sockets, up sockets. So something like the kitchen, um, say you haven't got a plan, yeah. will you pull your cables in? And ready. And ready we'll to go. We'll do a rough estimate where the cook is going to go yes, in. Yes, yes, that's uh, all, yeah. We've got room made for the sockets, the first drop and last drop, yeah. and then everything in between. We'll you can link out, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then lighting, we just need to take one feed down to the first wall light, yeah. and then it'll link through. So yeah. get your feeds in, yes. and you start putting some boards back down, make it a bit safer. Especially something like a kitchen where you have to be so precise on yeah. locations and things. Within. As long as you get them cables in, get them back to the board and all that sort of stuff can yeah. be done so after the next week should be uh pretty much ready because i'm going to stick a bit of bonding in it just yes. pre-empt for the plasterer get things supported. you're going to be that nice to him <sighs> someone's wow. got to be aren't they? Uh, if your mother doesn't love you at least someone will <laughs> so guys what you can see behind us right now is we're doing a oh! <laughs> <laughs> so I just got pinged by the ball because they're warming up ready for the kick it with key light challenge in partnership with mates in mind 
who are challenging the stigma of mental health in the construction industry. Let's get into it. Kick it with key light. Kick it with key light. I nominate Nick Bundy. Whoa, whoa, whoa that's the wrong shake. Don't worry, mate. Sure. I'll fix this. <laughs> Harry, make me look quicker in post. Okay. How accurate are you? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. It's not a bad effort. <laughs> Nick, I need you to stand behind it for me, mate. You're right, you need a target. Oh. So, the key's in the lockbox. That can only mean one thing. It's the end of episode five. Quick recap of the week. And being honest, we didn't get everything done we wanted to this week. Firstly, we hit this cable on Tuesday, so we pulled everyone off on site on Wednesday. I was actually really impressed with how Western Power came out, solved all that. Yesterday, we had the water mains going in. You would have seen that in the episode. And then today, being Friday, we had Nick Bundy on site with Adam, meant to be doing some cable pulling. But I'll be honest, we didn't get that done today. I guess that's what happens when you arrive on site with a rugby ball and a football. It was kick it with key light with a keep you up challenge. They're doing that in partnership with mates in mind. It's all about removing this stigma around mental health, specifically in the construction industry, which there's two suicides a day. So if you're watching this and you're in the industry, a message from me is speak to someone about it. So on the Verify Build next week, we've got Chris coming in on Tuesday because it's a four day week because of the tragic loss of the Queen. We're on a four day working week. So he's got to cram all of his first fix on the plumbing and heating in Tuesday to Friday. We've got Nick coming around to start pulling cable, stuff he was meant to be doing today, but we got carried away with a pair of balls. Really looking forward to what we've got coming up in the following weeks after that. This property is really gonna start taking shape with the heating system. Then we've got the bathrooms then we've got the kitchens, but I can actually hear Adam, Casper, Ryan and Nick in the pub, which is next door. They're in the beer garden. I've got a pint waiting for me. Have a fantastic weekend and do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to follow this journey. See you next week.